I think the biggest thing with exposure to cold weather is that you have to prepare in advance. If you know that you're going to find yourself in situations where you're exposed to cold weather, you should wear clothing that's amenable to that environment. One of the most uh, basic recommendations is to wear moisture wicking base layers underneath your clothing, um, an overlying layer that's fleece that also does not hold in moisture, and then an outer layer that will uh, protect you from the elements in terms of wind and rain and that sort of thing. Um, the biggest thing is that even despite the cold weather, you will sweat and your clothing choices should be clothing choices that will not capture in that moisture um, because exposure to moisture in cold environments will increase your rate of developing hypothermia and other conditions related to the cold. You develop the signs of hypothermia early on. Um, you have pin prickling sensations on your skin. Um, your joints get stiff. Um, you begin to develop those changes to your extremities. Um, you also can get that rosy red nose that we're all familiar with, which is an early sign of, of uh, developing frostbite. I think the first thing you have to determine is whether you have signs of frost nip or frostbite. And the difference in, is simple. Um, with frost nip, you typically have sort of red skin changes. Um, you will have pain in that area, whether it's the nose, the ears, um, or the extremities, and, or any other exposed area. Um, and that's um, one issue. Frostbite is sort of superficial versus deep. Superficial frostbite is when the skin is no longer red, it turns white, um, and, but it still is painful. Frostbite, um, deep frostbite, the kind that we all worry about, is when the skin becomes white, um, the injury is deep, and there's no pain. Um, so you've essentially damaged the, the tissue and the underlying nerves. You want to avoid rubbing the skin because you have decreased sensation in the area so you may be causing tissue damage to already damaged skin by warming the skin. And I think it's all of our sort of inclination is to rub our hands together but in the case of frost nip or frostbite you want to avoid damaging the tissues further in that way. You know I think if you have evidence of frost nip where you have red skin that's painful the biggest thing is to get it to a warm environment. If after you do that your skin starts to turn white um, and is either you know painful at that moment or painless. When you start to see those skin changes, like there's lack of blood flow to that area, you certainly should seek uh, medical treatment. And those conditions are any condition that results in a lack of blood flow to the extremities or to the surface of the skin. So we think about those uh, situations in patients with peripheral artery disease, people that have had to have stents placed in their legs and things like that um, due to decreased blood flow. Also, all diabetic patients have a disease of small blood vessels related to their disease. If you or someone you know is outside in the cold environment and come back in and seem confused, um, then those are the earliest signs of hypothermia and that should uh, be a patient that is seen quicker um, and probably should come to the emergency department.